Today I have the pleasure of speaking with John Cash from UR Energy about our favorite top topic, and that is uranium. How are you today? Hey, great, Tracy. It's good to be on again. Right now, we have a lot of different factors that we're looking at in the market. Uranium, are we still going to have a continued bull cycle in uranium? Yeah, I, we really believe we will, Tracy. I mean, we do expect a lot of volatility in the near term. Uh, it's simply because of geopolitics and because of different investment players involved uh, in, in the space, especially in the spot, uh, spot market with Sprott. Uh, so we do expect that volatility. But when we look at the long term, uh, there are so many countries now that are moving to nuclear power uh, in Asia, in Europe, uh, in the Americas even, that we believe the wind is at our backs right now. And in the long term, we really expect to see tremendous growth in the industry. And as a result of that, of course, they need fuel and we provide that fuel and we expect to see that uh, continue to grow. And that will put a lot of pressure on the price going forward. And of course, investors out there looking at criteria such as sustainability and ESG criteria. Can you just talk to us first about the issue of sustainability? You're one of only two producers of uranium and arguably the only pure uranium producer play in the United States. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's a very, very short list. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's the way uh, it's developed over the last few years. But yeah, su sustainability is incredibly important as well. You know, it's ESG and uh, our company, we've made great strides in that, uh, in that uh, arena. Uh, where we've really come to the table. I mean, first off, uranium by its nature and nuclear power by its nature, it's carbon free. And our production at Lost Creek and Shirley Basin will offset over 300 million metric tons of CO2 emissions. And we've taken other steps as well, like moving into an office in uh, Casper, Wyoming, so our employees don't have to travel out to the site every day. We've also made great strides in water recycling, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. And we've also got an R&D project ongoing to reduce our drill rig time and footprint. And uh, we're hoping to get that permitted here in the coming days and to be able to go out and test that. So we are making meaningful strides in uh, developing new technologies with regard to ESG and sustainability. And of course, those of you out there who may be new to uranium go, hmm, okay, we're gonna start looking at uranium. You may not be aware of how much uranium that we have received over the years from Russia and the Russian invasion in, of the Ukraine. Uh, I'm not seeing that translate yet to the market. So what's going on there? Can you comment? Yeah, no, it really hasn't translated to the market yet. And that's because that supply of uh, uranium from Russia has not been cut off by sanctions or counter sanctions. I mean, right now in the US, we get about 20% of our uranium from Russia. Uh, if you want to look at the former Russian satellites, uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, that number goes up to about 50% uh, of, uh, of our uranium comes from those countries. So it's a big, big chunk of the uranium that we burn in the US. Overall, that's 20% of our electricity uh, but the utilities have been quite successful at keeping that flow of material open. Their argument is we have to have it. Uh, we are essentially addicted to it. Got to have it to be able to keep the, our plants up and running. We don't want to shut those down. Uh, so we are beginning to see that price translate, especially into conversion and especially enrichment. But we have not seen it yet with regard to uh, primary uranium production. But there are bills in Congress to cut off that supply, both from the Republican side and the Democrat side. So we expect that the utilities will be moving away from Russian and Soviet supply uh, going forward, whether they do that through self-sanctioning or whether the U.S. government requires that or the Russian government cuts it off. So we do expect that to ultimately happen. Well, John, as always, we are delighted to have you at Investor Intel. Thank you for the update on uranium and uh, we look forward to your ongoing milestones and achievements and of course uh, uh, we love how you're making your office closer to the uh, the production site yeah absolutely it'd be great for our employees